precious Father, our loving Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come before you, Lord. Thank you so much, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for giving us a heart, a heart to look to you on a daily basis and to depend upon you. Lord, at this moment, Father, we, we commit our pastor and all of us into your hands, beseeching your mercies. Thank you, Lord, for the understanding you have given us. Lord, spiritual truths are not transmitted to the five senses. It needs an act of revelation. Thank you so much, Father. Lord, we pray that you will touch our hearts and our minds, open our hearts and our minds, Lord, to an understanding of your word, so that in an increasingly secular world, Lord, we stand firm and we grow into a deeper and a stronger relationship with you, helping, Lord, to lead the world, especially, Lord, the naturalists and the atheists who just miss the fundamental point in life. Lord, we ask your blessings upon us and speak to your servant and bless us, Lord, and help us to understand and grow in a deeper relationship with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we ask all this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Franklin, for leading us. Uh, and today we are going to discuss uh, or rather continue the series on spiritual disciplines. And the specific topic for today will be the spiritual discipline of Bible study, studying the Bible. And I, as I have been doing in this series, uh, I've been wanting to request you to bring in your experience of these disciplines, because all of you, I'm sure, have done this uh, for you know quite a long time uh, and regularly. And I'm sure you have some uh, helpful and interesting thoughts to share with us. So this is more... Uh, more participatory, so we are learning together. Uh, I do want to share some thoughts that I always try to glean from what I have understood. So as we begin today, I actually want to read you a scripture, uh, and I'm going to put it on the screen just to bring spiritual disciplines into perspective. So uh, as I, I'm presuming you can see that on the screen, uh, all right, so I'm going to read first from 1 Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse 7. Okay, it says, don't waste time arguing over foolish ideas and silly myths and legends. Spend your time and energy in the exercise of keeping spiritually fit. Verse 8, bodily exercise is all right. But spiritual exercise is much more important and is a tonic for all of you. So exercise yourself spiritually and practice being a better Christian because that will help you not only in this life, but in the next life too. As you notice, that's uh, the translation is the living Bible. All right. So. Um, uh, uh, this scripture perhaps encapsulates, you know, the uh, purpose of spiritual discipline. It gives us an insight into what spiritual disciplines are all about. Uh, here we are being encouraged to participate in spiritual disciplines. All right. Let me just uh, take off the screen there. Um, and it seemed to indicate to us spiritual disciplines are like spiritual exercise, you know, just as we exercise physically to keep the body fit, we, uh, you know, uh, can indulge in a exercise spiritually, so as to keep spiritually fit, right? And it, interestingly enough, it says this is helpful, not only in this life, but extending into the next, into the next life. Of course, I don't exactly know how that applies uh, in terms of eternal, the eternal perspective and how these disciplines would exactly apply. But that's what the apostle wants us to know. So uh, 
I thought, you know, uh, I, I bring that perspective uh, to us uh, from the scriptures of understanding what spiritual discipline is and, and how it helps us. It helps us spiritually. Now, it does not give us life, but it improves the quality of our life, right? Just as physical exercise doesn't give us life, it makes us fitter to live life more meaningfully or perhaps more in a more healthy manner. And I presume you can apply the uh, the correlation there to the spiritual life also. Okay, so having said that, today as uh, uh, we are going to study, uh, you know, about Bible study, reading the Bible, studying the Bible, uh, spending time in the scriptures, I would think is the most popular of the spiritual disciplines, right? I am sure that all of you have, and most Christians tend to um, you know, indulge in scripture study, you know, reading the scriptures, well, however they might actually do it. Now, I wanted to ask this question. Uh, the Bible study being the most popular among the spiritual disciplines. I asked the question, why is the Bible regarded so highly amongst us as Christians and disciples of Jesus? Why is it uh, regarded so reverentially? You know, uh, when I talk about reverence, I remember my dad telling me that he used to see his mother, that is my grandmother on my father's side. She used to wake up in the morning and, you know, she, she couldn't read. Uh, she never, you know, was cool. Uh, but she would take the Bible and kiss it every day. <laughs> so that's the regard she had for the scriptures, you know, for the biblical scriptures. But there is a scripture that tells us, uh, I would think, why we regard the Bible so, uh, you know, so reverentially and so highly. Once again, I'm going to a very familiar scripture, which uh, all of you have read, I'm sure, uh, uh, many, many a times. And it is 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God uh, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I'm sure you can uh, uh, recite that scripture from memory because we keep reading that on a regular basis. But I just want to pick up a few thoughts from there. That scripture seemed to indicate to us why we regard scripture so highly, because we believe God's inspiration is evident in scripture, in the Bible, right? We, we would go to perhaps to the extent of saying there is a divine presence in the scriptures, right? Because of God's inspiration. But interestingly enough, uh, we know there is a, a, a breathing of God into it, which basically means, you know, the Greek word theopenustos, you know, God breathed. In other words, God inspired it. But interestingly enough, it is written by human beings, by human authors, right? Uh, and it is written in the context of those human authors in whatever context they lived in. So it brings a humanity to it, but it also has a divinity to it. And that I think is very unique about our scriptures, uh, you know. So perhaps you could say it's a divine text. Bec uh, uh, and, and because it's a divine text, it's a reliable text. But on the other hand, it's authored by humans it's a human text, and hence it is understandable, right? It can, we can relate to it. We can uh, very much identify with it because it's written in a human context. So I felt, uh, you know, that's an interesting, you know, aspect about the biblical scriptures. 
I may want to mention that it is not a dictated test. I don't know if you have heard that there is something called the mechanical dictation theory. Uh, this is, you know, study, if you, if you study uh, uh, the Bible in its theological seminarian context, uh, perhaps you'll come across these words, the mechanical dictation theory, which uh, indicates that the Bible, uh, you know, some, you know, the text was dictated by God. And you might remember that there are some, uh, you know, probably some faiths that tend to indicate that their scriptures are dictated. There are also a Christian sect or so-called Christian sect that tends to believe that some, uh, some of their scriptures are dictated. But most Christians uh, will not subscribe to the mechanical dictation theory. So, so the Bible is not a dictated text, but it's an inspired text written by human authors. Okay, having said that, let as just an, as an introduction, um, I want to open it up for some thoughts uh, because you have read the scriptures. I want to know when you read the scriptures, perhaps how you read it, and how do you believe that it has helped you? What have you gained from reading scriptures on a regular basis? Why don't you share with us some thoughts there? I'm sure it will be very helpful. And as you do that, don't forget, uh, let's keep spiritual discipline in mind. I mean, the purpose of spiritual discipline in mind, how does it help us to grow spiritually? Okay. So that is the purpose. So Bible study, how has it helped you? How do you do it? What can you tell us about that? So the floor is open at this time. Yes, sir. Sorry, Monty, go ahead. Make sure you are unmuting yourself as you speak. It prepares us for the day. Okay. It, it cleanses us. It drives away the fever. It, dri it drives away the fear. Right. You are emboldened for the day's problems. Okay. I think that's a very interesting thought. Uh, it prepares you for the day, I mean, you say, uh, which is interesting. I remember one person saying, it is, uh, you know, reading the scriptures is like, uh, um, you know, dressing up for the day, you know, uh, just as you will wear your shirt and pants and probably a tie or whatever. Uh, <laughs> Reading the scriptures is like dressing up for the day. So uh, perhaps it echoes some of your thoughts, uh, Suri Murthy. Thank you for that. Uh, I think Bertie had a thought. Was it Bertie? Yes, go ahead, Bertie. I gave a thumbs up for what uh, Suri Murthy mentioned. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Anil, go ahead. I think it only, not only prepares us for the day, it prepares us for life. Because the scriptures say, right, that we doers are not just hearers of the word. So, you know, we need to act out. We need to, you know, whatever we learn, whatever we believe through the scriptures, that needs to be reflected in our day-to-day -day behavior. And I think that is the biggest uh, uh, help that the Bible gives. Okay. All right. You saying that it prepares us not just for the day, but for life. And life is made up of days. So, <laughs> but I like what Surimuthi said. You know, I mean, uh, many times we are uh, beginning our day maybe with some fears in mind or some apprehensions. Uh, perhaps uh, scripture reading could address those. Uh, maybe God can speak to us through the scriptures. Uh, yeah, that way it can be very helpful. Yes. Yes, sir. David, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, the very uh, the very first verse in Genesis or the book of John, in the beginning was the word. And it's the not word audible. Uh, yeah. Uh, your volume is just a bit low, David. Uh, maybe you can come closer to your device. I'm not sure. That'll help. Uh, is it better now? Yes, it's better now. Go ahead. Okay, okay. So, uh, well, we draw, of course, in the book of John, the very first chapter. 
says Come in the beginning of the word, the word was with God and the word is God. And of course, uh, it is like uh, we build relationship and contact to his word. And the word itself became flesh in the, uh, in the 14th verse of the same chapter of John. So um, it's, it's a relational uh, angle again, because uh, of course, uh, the word expresses the very, uh, you know, the very uh, God itself. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. The word is, the word was God. So uh, it is important uh, uh, not only to meditate but to, to uh, practice also the word of God. Uh, in the sense of reverentially knowing and also. So in that sense. Word of God makes a very vital road out there, every believer. That's what I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you, David. I think uh, what I get from what you're saying is that uh, uh, reading the scriptures connects you to, to God himself because he's the word. And in that respect, it's relation. So it helps in the relationship, right? I, I presume that's something that you alluded to. Interesting. Yes. Uh, uh, Rekha, did you have a thought? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, the Bible is a story of all humanity and all its foibles and the perfect human being, Jesus Christ, who showed the way and died for us. And therefore, it's an example of the mistakes we can make and the, from what we can learn from it all. Okay. All right. Yes, uh, Rekha. I mean, uh, uh, it, uh, it's like a mirror, right? I mean, it helps us to yeah. see ourselves as we read. I think... Uh, yeah, Bertie, you wanted to say something. Mrs. Noah, uh, I think you're, you're on mute. Can you have someone uh, unmute you? I think you want to say something. Yes, Bertie, could you just hold on? Yeah. Yes. yes. Especially Psalms. It, it, uh, it gives us so many thoughts. Not only one. Many uh, from the beginning till the end of 150. Psalms are full of meaning and encouragement. Different type of how we deal with one another, how we go through. All that is explained by the authors who wrote it. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Noah. It looks like Psalms is your favorite, <laughs> favorite book. So yes, I think Psalms are so rich in uh, what we can understand about life itself and, of course, uh, connecting with God. Thank you for that. <laughs> yes, Bertie, go ahead. Uh, please unmute yourself, Bertie. Thank you. As we all know, uh, as disciples of Christ, we have a calling. Our calling is, uh, you know, to, uh, to conform uh, to Christ as the Holy Spirit helps us. As our calling involves, you know, obedience to God and, uh, you know, his purpose for our lives and what he, uh, to have a hope for the future. Uh, uh, in, uh, uh, so as such, we, I feel when we're reading the word of God, uh, uh, God is, uh, as all of the, you know, the others, Suryamuthi, David has said, it's a relationship. Uh, we, uh, uh, we cannot do without the word of God. We have to, uh, I read it as sustenance for me. And uh, I, uh, as Mrs. Sandri says, not only Book of Psalms, others also, when you read it, there is, a, there is a blessing involved. There is a spiritual lift involved. And uh, 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 it tells you that, uh, you know, that uh, we need it. As, as the Lord says, you know, you eat, you eat and drink of God's, uh, my flesh and blood, symbolized with the bread and wine and also uh, God's word. We live by, you know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's a sustenance for us, and especially that we have received a calling, we cannot do without it. And even in my, when I'm setting out in my prayers, I, uh, I, I even tell, I even tell God what I'm going to do, where I'm going to go, you know. <laughs> and uh, I think that's important because God wants to be with us, and it, it, uh, He will straighten. God says, you know, He will straighten our way. So I, I take it as a blessing and I take it that I need it and it sustains us spiritually. Okay. Thank you, Bertie. I think uh, what you're saying is 
your personal experience is that uh, you know it, uh, it 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 gives you spiritual nurture, right? So that is uh, how you experience reading the scriptures. All right, good. Uh, did uh, Sulimurthy you wanted to say something? Go ahead. It's like charging a spiritual battery. <laughs> the more you are close with that, your battery is charged. <laughs> if you are away from it for a long time, you are discharged. Okay. Yes, okay. That, that, a very good analogy. Uh, I, uh, I think all spiritual disciplines are meant to charge your batteries, right? A spiritual battery. So I presume uh, reading the scriptures uh, definitely, uh, you know, helps us connect into the, the, the real source, the power source, which is, of course, God Almighty. So, yeah. Thank you, Surya Mukherjee. Anybody else would like to tell us a little bit about what you experience while you read the scriptures? Franklin, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, Franklin. Uh, Vanessa, Vanessa, ma'am, wanted to say something. Uh, okay, we'll come back to Vanessa. You can finish. You want me to finish, sir? Yes, please. Sir, uh, uh, I like Robert W. Armstrong's uh, quote, sir. Uh, Robert W. Armstrong was at his best, unbeatable, unsurpassable. He said, sir, uh, the Bible contains the basic foundational knowledge, otherwise not discernible. Uh, we keep groping in the dark, sir, and uh, the psalmist concurs with us, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Because of this, you said, uh, the naturalists and the atheists today are groping in the dark. Okay. Yes, it's interesting you uh, quote uh, Howard Armstrong. Uh, that, that just reminded me, you know, uh, uh, you know, at Ambassador College, uh, the campus, of course, which we don't own anymore, uh, in Pasadena, California, uh, on the on the on the main building, it there was a verse inscribed. It said, "The word of God is the foundation of knowledge." Uh, that that always inspired us because, uh, as we were studying in the college, you know, that continued to uh, help us. Thank you, Franklin. Yes, Vanessa, go ahead. I think you had a thought. Okay, uh, my my personal experience when uh, now when I am reading the Bible uh, thoroughly and finish with the New Testament, of course we all know that we is, we should love and we should forgive each other because no one is perfect. But I feel I feel that the Bible mostly maximum of the time is telling us how we need to forgive others and how we need to love others so now most most of the time and not to not to uh, think of harming another person god if he chooses then he of course will bring harm to whomever he wants so we shouldn't i think want harm on anybody so but what I was thinking is that so many people then we, we also tell God that uh, you give me this and I will give you this. So I think we shouldn't do that. When God feels that he needs to uh, provide us with something, he will provide us with it. So I think what I feel is the more we pray for the person who, whom we do not like or the person who does us harm, then I think we are blessed more. So now always when I pray, I pray most of the time for me, uh, for me to have more forgiveness in my heart, more love in my heart, more acceptance of other people, how they are. So that is what I now gain by reading the Bible, that I, to be a better person spiritually, to be a better person, a human. So that's what I have gained. Okay. What I gather from what you say is, uh, as you read the scriptures, it is probably, uh, you know, urging you, encouraging you, and moving you towards, uh, you know, being more forgiving, because it talks about being forgiving. Uh, you know, I mean, forgiveness is a theme 
which is prominent in the scriptures. That is what you seem to be getting. Well, very good. Uh, glad that glad that uh, you are getting something substantial from reading the scriptures. Right. Okay. All right. Um, I presume we've gone around. Anybody else want to share? Otherwise, what I'll do is at this time, then let me just share some more thoughts from what I could uh, study uh, about this. And then we'll open it up again for some of your closing thoughts, right? Let me make uh, just two general observations about a Bible study or reading the scriptures. And then I will move to three points uh, of how uh, scripture reading, studying the Bible can help us spiritually. So uh, two general thoughts. One is, let us always remember that scripture was an important part of Jesus' life. All right. Uh, it is very clear from when we read, uh, you know, about Jesus, that he knew scripture well. Uh, on several occasions, he quotes scripture, right? And I would think he quotes it in a way where he considers it to be an authority. Uh, and uh, it, 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 uh, he considers it to be something that guides us and helps us in matters of doctrine and practice. So we want to remember that Jesus highly regarded scripture. All right. Uh, we know that Christ even quoted scripture uh, as a primary weapon against the temptations of Satan. And that, of course, in Luke chapter 4, we very clearly have that narrative, how Jesus quotes scripture. Yeah, interestingly enough, Satan also quotes scripture, but he, I should say, misquotes it. <laughs> uh, but Jesus, uh, you know, uh, brings in, uh, you know, uh, the, the right understanding and interpretation of scripture. Uh, even as we talk about Jesus and how he valued scripture, we must also, I think, hasten to add that he had the authority to interpret it and, may I say, reinterpret it. Right? Um, for example, he brought out the real meaning behind the laws with regards to murder and adultery and many other things. So Jesus Christ, you could say, brought a fulfillment to the scripture. He did it in two ways. One is he helped us understand the real intent of the law. And he also brought fulfillment of scripture in his own person. And that is one important thing we need to keep. Perhaps the most important thing that he applied scripture to himself. In other words, he went on to say that he was the fulfillment of scripture itself. You know, in other words, scripture was pointing to the Messiah, his Messiahship, and he indeed was the promised Messiah. And so in that respect, I think it is good for us to keep in mind uh, how Jesus regarded scripture, not only that he valued it, used it as an authority, uh, but he also reinterpreted it or brought its full meaning. And finally, he also said that he himself is the fulfillment of scripture. Uh, and that's the reason why we talk about Jesus as the living word of God. I think David was alluding to the fact that, you know, he was the word, but we consider him to be the living word of God. And even though we have the written word of God in the scripture. So that is one thought maybe I thought I'll just uh, share with you. One more thought is uh, our own attitude towards scripture. We looked at how Jesus' attitude towards scripture was. What is our attitude towards scripture? And perhaps I can say, you know, we all love God. We are to love God, but we love and value God. And if we do so, uh, I think we must also love and value the writings that God himself inspired for us. And so our, our attitude towards scripture should be one of loving the, the word of God, the written word of God, and, and of course, uh, valuing it. 
And I think some one of you mentioned about, uh, you know, how it is nurture for us, spiritual nurture. Just as we hunger and thirst for God, we desire to learn from him in his word. Our desire is reflected in our regular connection with scripture. So uh, our attitude should be one of regular connection. I think it was Bertie who was mentioning about how it gives us spiritual sustenance. And so our attitude should be one of wanting to connect with scripture. And let us not forget that we come to know God through scripture. I mean, that, that is a very important way for us to know God. It's very interesting that, you know, I'm sure many of you have, or all of you have read books. And when you read books, don't you know a little bit about the author, right? I mean, I, 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 have, I can say that I have enjoyed reading uh, uh, an author like Philip Yancey. He is, I would say, my own, more or less my favorite author. Philip Yancey, N.T. Wright, C.S. Lewis, some books, I've not read all of these works, but some of the books I've read there. But, you know, I come to know the author a little bit more when I read, especially Philip Yancey. He's so personal. He, he brings his, his personal experience into his writings. And I think uh, similarly, when reading the scripture, you know God a little bit more, don't you? Uh, so that is, should be our attitude towards scripture. Okay, having said that, let me then just very list out three important points on how scripture helps us. The studying and the reading of scripture on a regular basis helps us. And this is a spiritual discipline, I think, well worth our time. And uh, like some of you said, it prepares us not only for the day, but for life itself. Um, one is, I'd like to read from the book of Proverbs. And here it mentions the call to study scripture and why it is so important. I hope you can see the uh, screen. Let me read Proverbs 1, beginning from verse 1. Notice it says, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instructions in prudent behavior, doing what is right, and just and fair. Verse 4, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance for understanding uh, proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay, so uh, once again, I'm sure you've read that scripture many a times, but uh, there are some good takeaways from that, uh, you could say, uh, introduction to uh, what Solomon is writing. Uh, obviously, the, the, the very obvious thought that comes to mind is he's encouraging us to gain wisdom, right? So Bible reading, obviously, is a very effective way to gain wisdom, to gain understanding, insight, instruction, instruction for life and for the various issues of life, certainly knowledge. And, uh, and he says it adds to our learning, right? And obviously contributing towards uh, the wisdom to deal with life, with all its, you know, perhaps uh, challenges and uncertainties. Interesting thought towards the end, he says, those who don't want this are compared to fools. In other words, it's foolish to ignore instruction. It is foolish to ignore such rich learning that we can gain from reading the scriptures. And so, that is one thing perhaps uh, we want to keep in mind as we read scripture and do Bible study regularly, that it gives us instruction and insight, knowledge and learning, and certainly wisdom. And it would be to our own foolishness. It would be foolish for us to ignore it. All right. So that is one point I'd like to leave you with. Secondly, 
the Bible is a source of truth. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, truth can also be learned in many ways, but the Bible, I would say, is a primary source of truth, right? Uh, let me read you one or two scriptures. Uh, I don't have it on the screen, but uh, it's a very short uh, scripture, so I'll read it for you. John 17, verse 17, Jesus himself says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. So obviously, you know, truth, of course, in the ultimate analysis, truth is Jesus Christ himself. He is living truth. But the word contains truth. It is truth. And so it is the source for truth. So for us to, uh, you know, for us to be indulging in scripture, so reading and Bible study is something where we are gleaning truth and learning truth from it. Psalm 119, verse 105, I think one of you quoted it, uh, perhaps it was Franklin. He said, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. All right. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Once again, echoing what Surimurthy and what Anil was saying, it prepares us for the day. It sheds a light for us as we begin our day and move through our journeys of life. Uh, and so in that respect, we are learning so much and it prepares us to, to be ready for the challenges of life. So perhaps let's keep in mind, as we study the scriptures, we can be assured that we have the truth in the scriptures, you know, the ultimate truth in one sense, uh, uh, you know, and of course, Christ himself being the embodiment and the personification of truth. And so uh, uh, let's be encouraged that one of the best sources of truth is, or the best source of learning and correction and training and truth is the Bible. All right. So that is uh, uh, another plug for us to do this regularly, to, to be schooled in the scriptures and as disciples of Jesus. It would be very unfortunate if we don't know anything about the scriptures, unless, of course, you are totally unlearned, uh, uh, you know, uh, unlettered, I should say, uh, you know, like my grandmother. But I'm, I'm sure she heard the word being read to her and she uh, revered it quite deeply. Finally, one more thought. Uh, the value of study. And uh, just to bring this a little bit closer, I like to read a story from the scriptures. Uh, once again, something familiar for all of us. Uh, and I'm going to go to Luke chapter 10 and read this very interesting story. And let's see what it can teach us. Luke 10 and beginning in verse 38, it says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And Jesus responds, Martha, uh, verse 41, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. All right. Uh, I like that story, and uh, I'm sure you, uh, you know, identify with that story. But uh, what I, what I like about that is how Jesus, you know, uh, gently uh, sort of uh, guides Mary to understand what is something very important. Right, Jesus commends an attitude of wanting to learn from him. All right, the desire to want to know. Uh, and Martha had that desire, and she, you know, very, very prominently displayed it uh, as she sat at Jesus' feet listening to him. Right. Uh, and as she learned from Jesus, I'm sure. There were so many things she 
uh, was, was understanding perhaps for the first time because Jesus as a teacher was a very effective teacher and he brought uh, life into the scriptures and, and into his stories. And I was just thinking to myself, is it possible as we have this desire to study scripture and learn from it, that in eternity, we will be learning and learning and learning. You know, I mean, uh, isn't that interesting? I mean, uh, uh, in other words, we will, we can never exhaust the meaning of who God is or understanding God in his totality. We will never reach the end of learning, right? And perhaps Martha was displaying that attitude of wanting to know about Jesus and about, you know, the spiritual aspects of life. Uh, and so... Mary, Mary uh, wanting... Sorry. Uh, Mary, Mary was wanting to learn and grow. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm, mis I'm probably, uh, uh, you know, interchanging the names. Uh, thank you for that, Bertie. Right. So anyway, coming back to the story, uh, you know, I'm sure we, we need to have that sense of wonder, you know, of wanting to know more about God. And perhaps one of our, uh, one of our uh, vocations would be to know more about God. Uh, and that is the relationship that we will have with God. We will want to know more about him. We pro probably we will be sitting at the feet of the triune God and looking into his dazzling face, whatever that might be, and say, tell me more, tell me more. And I presume that's the value of studying the scriptures. It, it, it's, it's, an, it's like a, a very deep well. You can put your pail in or your bucket into the well and you can keep drawing. And it never exhausts. The well never exhausts the water. There is so much you can draw from it, all right? Jesus, you remember once said, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So perhaps once again, studying the scriptures, learning the scriptures is an important physical sustenance uh, and spiritual nurture obviously is important for all of us, as some of you mentioned. Uh, so I want to leave you with those points. And let me just end by uh, just some, uh, maybe I should say, uh, precautions for us to keep in mind. One is that there is much within scripture that we can understand, all right? Obviously, we wouldn't read scripture. There is much we can understand. And we need to focus on those, what we can understand and learn it and make it clear in our minds. But simultaneously, there are also not so clear parts in the scriptures. And like we say on many occasions, you know, here in, the, in, in this Bible study, uh, that there are things we don't know. And sometimes some scripture or certain portions of scripture are written in a way where we might not fully fathom what it is actually trying to say. Maybe it is to remind us that there is something still unclear and we need to know. Perhaps it's inviting us on a journey to not give up, to continue to stay with scripture, pers you know, persist with scripture, right? Uh, and maybe I should mention, let us, let us be, or rather apply the clear verses so that we can be better equipped to understand the not so clear, right? So let us not be so obsessed with the not so clear that we completely ignore what is clear, all right? And uh, another precaution, perhaps keep in mind as we study the scriptures, we know that scripture can be misinterpreted. We know that many, many people misinterpret scripture. Sometimes some of them abuse it and, and bring false conclusions from the scriptures. Let us not be discouraged by that. We know that's going to happen. We know that there is deception in the world. Uh, we, we don't want to be discouraged and completely give up on scripture or you say, you know, uh, why is scripture so confusing and I don't want to read it. Let's not do that. Let's continue to persist and remain with the clear part so that the unclear becomes, uh, you know, 
uh, perhaps a little bit more understanding. And let me then end with this final scripture, uh, and let, I'm going to read it again for you. And this is found in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17, another one of those GCI favorite scriptures, right? We read these quite often. 2 Peter 3, 17 says, Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure positions. Verse 18 says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Notice 17 is like a warning. Be forewarned, it says, that, you know, we are not carried away by error. Now, how do you protect yourself from that? So that you're not carried away from error or are carried away by error? Well, read the scriptures. That's what verse 18 is telling us. Grow in the grace and knowledge. And one of the ways knowledge we get is through the scriptures. Knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So just as uh, you know, a closing, keep those thoughts in mind. And it's interesting how this verse uh, ends. To him be glory, both now and forever. Right? So to Christ be glory, always. We don't glorify a written uh, text. We glorify the living text that Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I will stop with that. We've got a good 10 minutes left for thoughts you would like to share uh, or any questions that you might have. Please feel free to also bring in your personal, uh, what do you say, learnings, right? Yes, Anil, go ahead. Yeah, uh, two things. One is, uh... <clears throat> Are you at, at, at a later Bible study going to talk about how to study the Bible, how to study God's Word? You know, book by book or end to end or chapter one. However, I don't know. That might be very helpful. And what I would, what, wanted to add was in my personal and I think Rita's also is, uh, I find it very helpful reading it with a commentary. I have a, I have a, Bible uh, app <clears throat> called Bible Gateway on my computer and phone. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot of commentaries, you know, by different authors, you know. Uh, uh, and I, I find that very helpful. And okay. like some words may not be clear in one commentary or uh, uh, as described by one person, we can always refer to a couple of others where it is probably more clear. And I find that very helpful. This is just an observation for others to sort of take it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Anil. Uh, uh, regarding the first question you asked, whether we are going to do a study on how to actually study the Bible, maybe I should uh, defer that to our scholar here, Praveen, <laughs> who is a biblical scholar. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll come to that, you know. But let me mention about the commentaries. Uh, yes, commentaries are very helpful. I, I, I look into it, but you must also be careful what commentary you're reading. That's right. right. <laughs> because there are commentaries that can mislead and then bring in vested interests, you know, uh, and there are commentaries named after some contemporary Christians. I, it's amazing how they name it after themselves. But uh, one, I would be very careful how I read it because... Uh, uh, I like to read things from a Trinitarian lens, like we say, you know, our incarnational Trinitarian lens, but many other authors may not. And so you may want to be careful. But yes, uh, commentaries can be very helpful. Any thoughts from anybody on that? Praveen, you have a thought on any uh, suggestions on commentaries? Okay. Maybe just one author of, for the commentary, refer to a three, and that really sort of uh, brings out uh, if the first one is not very clear or, or you don't like what he's saying. You know, <laughs> okay, I, I may just want to add that uh, uh, what some scholars say is don't go to the commentary, you know, first. Uh, read the text. Uh, and uh, read the context also. So in other words, if you are struggling with one verse, uh, read the text, certainly read the context, and then see 
how you can connect what is the author trying to say to the original audience and then how it can apply to us. And then of course, go to the commentary. That is how some scholars uh, tell us. You know. yeah. Okay. All right. I think uh, uh, Surya Murthy and then after that, uh, Bertram. Yes, go ahead, Surya. Well, we go into the commentaries. It takes a lot of time to get the clear picture. It takes a lot of time. One another tool which I prefer is the dictionaries, Bible dictionaries. For example, I have Baker's Bible dictionary, Zondervan's Bible dictionary, Oxford Bible dictionary. These dictionaries are very helpful. Okay. You don't have to spend much time. If you want to look out a word for, say, Assyria. You look at the word for Assyria. So in one place, you get everything about Assyria. It will not take about even two minutes to read the article. Okay. I want to make two more statements. Yeah. We are nowadays using the word spiritual. Uh, a few days ago, I suddenly remembered I have never read the word spiritual in the Old Testament. I was feeling I have never read the word old spiritual in Old Testament. So then I checked up. The word spiritual occurs in the Old Testament only once. <laughs> in, the, in the KJV. And in the KJ, New Testament, it occurs 25 times. It has, been, it has been my practice for many, many years. Whenever I read the word spiritual, I don't understand it. It is a very intangible, intangible word. So wherever the word spiritual occurs, I replace it with of the mind or mental. Then it be, gives a very clear picture. I do not know I am right or wrong. <laughs> wrong. That, is, that gives the clearest meaning of the mind or mental. Spiritual gifts, gifts of the mind. So another thing which I wanted to say was you were talking, you were uh, quoting Timothy about all scriptures are given by inspiration. When Paul was writing this, there was not no New Testament. There, were, there was only Old Testament. So what I feel is that when we read the Bible, we must pay equal attention to Old Testament. So whenever we use the word Old Testament, it gives an uh, appearance that is abandoned Testament, just like the lot of buildings on the railway track. It is not abandoned. It is equally valid today. And I think we must pay equal attention to that. OK. Well, thank you, uh, Surya Murthy. Uh, you know, you, when you mentioned spiritual, uh, maybe I can just add that it also de derives, it's a derivative of spirit. And God is spirit, Holy Spirit. And so maybe we should also keep in mind when we talk about spiritual, it is not just of the mind. Yes, it could be, but it is of God, <laughs> right? Of uh, of the spirit, which is God. Just just an uh, just an addition to what you said. All right. Okay. Uh, let's go to Bertram and David. Then we can can we come to you after Bertram? Thank you. Um, uh, this thing is uh, now they have the uh, the whole of the Bible of the app. Uh, on the mobile app, and uh, so just could you just comment, uh, you know, uh, using a mobile app to read the word or to you know whatever uh, for our study or you know references etc. And, uh, and not using uh, and not normally uh, using uh, you know the by the the book as such. Uh, 
Uh, would you like to comment on uh, it as such? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if I understood your question. Are you no, asking, that, is it that, wrong to read the Bible uh, on, on your mobile? Is that what you're asking? No, no. I'm saying it's uh, like uh, now you have the whole Bible on the app. And yes. uh, quite a number of people, even preachers, when they go up, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I'm, uh, if I'm wrong, forgive me, but uh, so many preachers go up with the app or rather than taking the Bible, you know, and reading the scriptures. Now, as in the New Testament, we never had the app and other things. Now, this is a modern device. It's helpful to us. And they have the whole Bible on the app. So they use the app more than the Bible. I'm not saying right or wrong. What, what is your comment on it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure if I, I should make any comments. The, the question is, can you see it? I mean, if you can't see the small lettering, you might as well use the big book. <laughs> I don't know. So, go ahead. You had a I think it, for me, it's very helpful. <clears throat> okay. Right. Surimurthy, you had a, a, a comment on, on what Bertram said? The best way to read the Bible, in my opinion, is to get the Bible on Kindle. Kindle. <laughs> So in Kindle, you can choose the size of the phones. Okay. <laughs> make notes in that. Make notes in them. Immediately search in the scripture. So Kindle is free. Right. You so can get Kindle app. even on the app, mobile. Yes. So you know there is an app called Bible Gateway. You can do anything and everything. Increase the fonts, no. make notes, commentaries, dictionaries, as you mentioned. Everything is there on all on yes. one device. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm aware of that. Yeah. I'm I've been using it for more than a decade. But I prefer Kindle because offline also you can offline. Yeah. Offline, you can read in the Kindle. You cannot read it without internet. Bible Gateway. You can. Bible Gateway, you cannot with a... You can. They have now introduced that. <laughs> I guess you can download Sorry. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, that's interesting I thoughts. I, I, I presume Bertie would still have a problem because it was Kindle was not used in the New Testament times. <laughs> and... and, no, and no. And to that extent, Bertie, I'm not sure if books were used. You know, they use scrolls. So, <laughs> so I'm not sure what we are saying. You know, uh, please, uh, let's not be uh, worried about that. Some people feel that it is sacrilegious to read the Bible on, on, an, on a mobile. Uh, let's not, uh, you know, go to that extent. That is becoming very legalistic. Uh, what, okay. what is convenient for you? Please do that. All right. Okay. Yes, let's go to David then. You, David had a thought. Thank you for the point. The point. Um, uh, can you hear me well? Hello? Yes, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, yeah, coming to the point of uh, uh, commentary. Um, yes, of course, the Word of God, the Holy Bible is the source of all resources. Um, but yes, we can use commentaries as tools. Um, and uh, even um, uh, concordances can be used, concordance, very good concordance. Uh, I'm not able to remember the author. Uh, concordance Wrong. along I... with the, the uh, you know, uh, the commentaries. Uh, one of the commentaries which, uh, I mean, I personally liked was uh, um, Martin Henry. Uh, Martin Henry, no, 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 Henry Matthew, Matthew Henry. sorry. Henry Matthew Henry. Matthew. Matthew. Matthew Henry. Matthew. Matthew. Matthew, Matthew Henry. Henry, right? Matthew Henry, yeah, one of very the detailed, yeah, very yeah. detailed. One of the uh, preferred commentaries, uh, but there are many others. But I personally found that one very. The popular. concordance, yeah. concordance names are mainly popular ones are Cruden's concordance, Young's yeah, concordance. Cruden. Exactly, Cruden's, Cruden's. I was thinking of that. Yeah, Cruden's. Cruden's oh. is one of the uh, older. Uh, since all of you are talking about uh, commentaries and somebody asked for uh, some references and which commentaries are good. Uh, Matthew Henry has two versions of commentaries. Number one is uh, 
uh, exhaustive commentary the other one is a simplified uh, version of uh, Matthew Henry's commentary if you are just looking for a basic reading of the scripture and all the simplified version is good I mean, if you want to get into study uh, that uh, exhaustive commentary from Matthew Henry is useful along with that uh, if you want to go more and more deep into that there is a commentary called pulpit commentary that is very exhaustive and um, uh, you will get best information from that and I would like to encourage in case in case if it is available there is a book called uh, <coughs> excuse me um, uh, one minute just now I forgot the person's name um, what is this? Um, uh, there is a Bible guide. Just give me half a second. I forgot the name of the book. It's open. I'll just read that. <laughs> I'll read and come. <laughs> well, while Praveen is uh, checking, anybody yeah, else have yeah. any thoughts? Yeah, I got it. Okay, go ahead, Praveen. It's called Wilmington's Guide to the Bible. Okay. Wilmington's Guide to the Bible. And uh, it will give you a direction regarding studying the scripture in a systematic way. And it doesn't lean towards any denomination and it doesn't lean towards any particular perspective but it will give you it will present uh, things in its context so that can be uh, helpful so regarding commentaries Matthew Henry is good and as well as uh, even if you want to read by a basic and spiritual if you want to get more of spiritual information spiritual way of interpreting the scripture uh, there is another commentary called Maggie. You might have come across this name, MCG Maggie. Uh, he wrote commentaries on each book and they are separately available. And those give more of spiritual insights. So these are the suggestions I can give. Okay. Thank you, uh, Praveen. Any, any thought? Yes, Suryamurti, go ahead. My experience is that we have got a very short life. And then if we are going to concentrate on commentaries, <laughs> it will take a lot of time. <laughs> Only when you are unable to understand some particular verse or particular chapter, you should go for that. Otherwise, uh, we have got a very short life. It is very difficult to read all of them. Okay, <laughs> right. Perhaps uh, we can preserve some of those books. We, and uh, when we have eternal life, <laughs> we can then exhaust it all. Yes, Bertie, go ahead. Uh, we, should, uh, uh, we should be uh, fully sure that these commentaries and, you know, particularly, and, uh, you know, the authors, so-and-so commentaries, you know, uh, you know, by the name of the author. Uh, I just, uh, we should uh, prayerfully uh, sort of and be sure that it's God-inspired because uh, the Lord says you know, the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. And uh, what uh, what um, uh, Suryamthi mentioned is very right. You know, instead of uh, delving, delving actually into this and that, uh, firstly, you should know whether it's spiritually inspired all these. And we should know that uh, God Himself, the Holy Spirit, is a teacher, conforming us to Christ. You know, so it's very important for the Holy Spirit uh, to be to be our guide and to be helper and uh, giving, you know, as a comforter, counselor, and is that the the Holy Spirit will lead us in all into all truth, as the Lord has said. Thank you, thank you, Bertie. Yes, maybe we'll end it here because we have passed the hour. Uh, maybe. Uh, uh, maybe I can just, uh, you know, uh, close by saying uh, in all that we study and read, of course, it depends on our preference. Some people like to go deep. Uh, as a preacher, I'd like to do a little bit of, you know, extra study so that I can bring in the richness of the scriptures. But never forget that never lose the center of the center. Jesus Christ himself, right? Never ever forget that we must, whatever we understand and interpret and read and all of those things, that Christ must be at the center of it all. So uh, 
maybe I could say, let's be Christocentric. Uh, even as we read the Old Testament and the New Testament, in fact, the New Testament sheds a lot of light into the Old. So Christ should be the center. So let's keep that in mind as we do our Bible studies. And may God bless you as you continue the spiritual discipline of studying the scriptures. Thank you for waiting. Uh, we've uh, uh, gone a little overhead uh, uh, over time, but Rekha, would you please uh, do the honors for us? And Father, almighty God, we come before your royal throne thanking you, Father, for everything. You are a gracious God. You are the king of the universe. And as we strive to learn more and more about you, you're always speaking to us, either through prayer or Bible study or inspiration. You always, you never left us alone and we are really grateful. Please, Father, help us to go deeply into your word every day. For that is our food, Father, as, well, as we understand, Father. That is, what, that, is, that is what we live for, Father. Please help us to appreciate it, Father. For all those who are suffering at this time all over the world, like the people in Afghanistan and other places, Father, we really do need help at this time, for the world is really going out of control. And Father, as we go about our businesses, all of us here, please bless us so that we do our best and learn and appreciate and go out into the world doing your work. Thank you, Father, for everything. And we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 And thank you again for all your thoughts and comments. Uh, look forward to seeing you soon again on this platform. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.